Hello, my name is Martin. Originally, I'm from Wenspils in Latvia. Wenspils is an important ice-free port. Large amounts of oil and other mineral resources are imported and exported abroad ships at Wenspils. The money from port services has made Wenspils the wealthiest city in Latvia. It was once a member of Hanseatic League, just like Kings Lynn. For the last two years, I've been living in Kings Lynn. I really like living here because I've made loads of new friends and learned loads about England. I wanted to get involved in the Heritage Project and I thought it would be cool to research wartime England and compare it, it with my family's experience. While speaking to my grandmother, I learned that my great-grandfather was a driver in the Red Army. At the time, this was a high-ranking position because the majority of soldiers were on foot. He was one of the soldiers who helped in the liberation of Berlin in 1944. He was a member of Red Army, which was the largest army in the history from the 1940s until the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. The Red in Red Army refers to the bloodshed by the working class in its struggle against capitalism. The symbol of the Red Army is a red five-pointed star. It is sometimes understood to represent the five fingers of the worker's hand. He was badly injured when Nazi shelled his truck, but he was one of the lucky ones. Within the post-war borders were approximately 26.6 million. But enough about me. What about the people of Kingsland and their war stories? Well, during World War One, we found out that the horse chestnuts were used to produce the chemical compound acetone. The most familiar household use for acetone is the active ingredient in nail polish remover, but it was once used as a bomb making ingredient. A Kingsland factory called the Synthetic product company was converted to the for the production of butwile alcohol and acetone from horse chestnuts school children were set the task of collecting the chestnuts but transport was difficult as a result of this tons of chestnuts were left to rot in the railway stations the government didn't tell people why they were collecting chestnuts in fear of the germans copying the same idea Questions were even asking in Parliament and some people believed that the government was trying to make profit out of their harvest. The production of acetone only lasted for three months as the chestnuts were poor quality but some to the autumn of 1917 is still remembered for its conquer collection. Before the 20th century, civilians in Britain had been largely unaffected by war. Overseas wars rarely touched British shores. even. Violent civil wars passed most civilians by unless they were very unlucky. But the First World War was to change that forever. Count von Zeppelin, a retired German army officer, designed and flew his first airship in the 1900s. They were lighted in air, filled with hydrogen, with a steel framework. When the First World War started in 1914, the German armed forces had several Zeppelins, each capable of travelling about 85 miles per hour and carrying up to two tons of bombs. With military deadlock on the Western Front, the Germans decided to use them against towns and cities in Britain. The first raid was on Great Yarmouth and King's Lent, January 1915. Five people were killed in the raids. Filled with hydrogen, any leak formed an explosive mixture with air and while manoeuvring over near the ground collisions were sometimes devastating. L3 and L4 were the first two Zeppelins to raid Norfolk. Each contained 19 gas filled bags and a crew of 21 housed in two gondolas slung beneath the enormous structures. Three motors enabled the Zeppelins to reach speeds of 50 miles per hour, that's 80 kilometers per hour. Britain eventually responded to the Zeppelins with its own airship, the Pulham Pigs. During the entire First World War, 56 bombs fell on London and 214 tons elsewhere. That's the same way as roughly 550 elephants. Bombs were also dropped on Beeston, Sheringham, Brancaster, Eacham, Snedisham. 
In the beginning of the 20th century, 1900s Lynn continued to expand and by 1930s many of the old back-to-back -back terrace type houses had been demolished as they were considered unfit for living in. With Lynn growing at such a rate, by the mid-1930s, Wootons and Gable were linked to the old town of Lynn. In 1962, the Kingsland Corporation made an agreement with the London Council. As a result, between 1962 and 1975, the population of Lynn grew from 28,000 to 35,000. At a similar time, many of the beautiful old medieval town buildings were demolished, including the birthplace of Capitan Vancouver in order to make the way for the Vancouver Shopping Centre. Between 1966 and 1969, Hillington Square was built. First the estate was built in the mid-1960s, and between 1968 and 1978, 5,000 people moved to Lynn from London in what was known as the Greater London Cons Council Overspill Scheme. What lured these people to Lynn were the cheap housing and possibility of quieter way of life. At a similar sort of time, the Hardwick Industrial Estate began to grow in order to provide jobs for the newcomers to, ta to the town. To help people feel part of the community, the council bought in a policy of one local family per six households. Lynn people at first were little unwelcoming to the London's and some complain that they were taking their jobs. It is documented in Lynn Museum in the bus station that the Londoners too had reservations of Lynners. One was quoted as saying, I used to get impatient in Lynn shops. People do not hurry, they stand and chat to the shopkeeper and I used to get mad waiting for them. The whole pace of life is slower. The regeneration of 60s, Lynn, Town centre aged badly and so in the 2005 the Vancouver centre was rebuilt yet again. This is how it looks today.